Hi everyone, welcome to Cloud Curious. Today, we are curious about Azure Service Bus and its integration with Azure Functions. We would see this with a business use case. We have a company called as ABC Sports Company. ABC Sports Company sells sports goods through its retail and online platforms. The orders are submitted uh, from the retail and online uh, platforms using an API and the order lands up in the service bus queue that's shown here with the name SB UK South ABC order queue. And uh, there is an Azure function that's going to process the orders from the service bus queue and identify the right warehouse which can serve that particular order and then it publishes that particular order to a topic in the another service bus queue. And uh, this topic is being subscribed by different uh, subscriptions uh, like Warehouse Liverpool, Warehouse Manchester and Warehouse Reorder. So what are the components that we have used in this particular business use case? We've got a retail and uh, online platform and then we've got an API. So I'm not going to look into these aspects. I'm just going to look into the um, look into the components which are shown within the dotted uh, square or a square box here. So we've got an Azure service bus queue here, which will receive the incoming orders from the customer. And then we've got an Azure function, which is going to process the uh, functions from a service bus queue and uh, it's going to then uh, identify the right warehouse to process it and then it publishes that order into a topic and the topic is being subscribed by the various warehouses and it will pick its corresponding order so we've got an azure service bus basic and then uh, we got an azure service bus standard service bus here and then we've got an azure function serverless here before uh, jumping into the demo, I would like to quickly walk through what a service bus is. So a service bus is a fully managed enterprise message broker, which manages the messages through its uh, infrastructure of queues and uh, topics. And Azure service bus is something not new uh, in Azure. This has been there for a long time. Uh, in different softwares that we have used on premise, such as uh, RabbitMQ and Apache MQ. Uh, message bus by default is used to load balance the work across uh, different competing uh, worker threads. It can also be used as a communication mechanism between two different uh, uh, applications because uh, we could have a, a reliable and a fail-safe way to communicate between two applications. It can also be used to coordinate a transactional work which, degrees, which requires a high degree of reliability. So these are the basic uh, use cases why we need to a, a, a service bus or a message bus by default. We have seen this. And then we have got two concepts which are fundamentally used in a service bus, which is uh, queues. So queue is something like any sender can send messages to a queue. Then we would have something like a first in first out concept. And then uh, receiver would uh, receive this uh, information from the queue from the other end of the queue. While this is uh, a good way to ensure uh, uh, reliability between two different applications there are this you can't uh, filter certain things or if you want some of the receiver want to receive only specific messages then you can't do that with queues that's when they've come up with a concept called as topics and uh, so in a topics a sender would send in a uh, message while the receiver can uh, filter and uh, receive messages only which is accepting certain criterias or uh, which satisfy certain criterias. So that's why we use that. That's, that's what the concept of topics comes into play. 
And uh, yeah, so the, these are the basic things uh, we need to understand about queues and uh, topics. We will uh, move on to the demo next. Let's start by creating the components that we need for the demo. We need the following components to be created in uh, Azure. I'll start by creating a resource group. So I'm creating it under my default uh, subscription. I'm going to follow a naming convention for the resource group name as uh, RG. RG stands for resource group. And then I'm going to create it in UK South and uh, in the purpose of this resource group. So I'm going to say is um, uh, service bus uh, learning and I'll keep it as 05. Then I'm going to select the region, UK South. I'm not going to create any tags, so I'm just going to review and create it. So it's all good, create it. Yeah, I've got it uh, created in uh, UK South region, the resource group. Now uh, let's uh, create a service bus uh, next. So by default, I've got it uh, created under uh, the RG UK South SB Learning 05 resource group. And I'm going to create a namespace. I'm going to keep the namespace as, uh, I've got a helper uh, file where I've got all the names to be used. So I'll just open it. So this is the name I'm planning to keep for my uh, order uh, service bus. So I'm using the same naming convention. Service bus is the name of the component, service bus UK South. And then we've got the name of the name of the service bus, which is ABC order. And uh, I'm going to create this in uh, UK South. And uh, you have three pricing tires uh, available uh, with uh, service bus, which is uh, basic. And then we've got standard and premium. So for this particular service bus, I'm going to select a basic as my uh, uh, namespace, uh, sorry, the pricing tire. Just going to create it, uh, create and review. And now I'm going to create the same. As you see, the deployment is in uh, progress. Let's give a couple of uh, minutes for the deployment to happen. Once uh, we've got the service bus created, we will create a queue named as uh, queue.customerorder in order to receive the customer order uh, messages. So I will go back to my resource group. Let's see whether it is getting created. Yeah, I've got a service bus namespace here. That's very nice. I've got an entity called as queues. So please note that uh, this is uh, the pricing tire is basic. So I have only one entity uh, type of entity to be created in a service bus, which is queues. I will add a queue now. I'll keep the queue name as uh, queue.customerorder. I'll click on the name create. So I've got the SB UK South UK ABC order so bus ready and also the I've got the queue ready under underneath it. So we will go for the next uh, service bus now. It's uh, I'm clicking the service bus once again to create. So we've got the same subscription resource group. Now I'm going to create the with a new namespace called as uh, SB, which stands for service bus UK South. And I'm going to say that this service bus is for the fulfillment centers. And uh, I'm going to create the location as uh, UK South. 
and in this case I'm going to select uh, standard as the pricing tier. Standard uh, has you could do about uh, uh, approximately 10 USD is charged per uh, 12.5 operations per month so I'm going to select it and uh, let's go to the next uh, tab which is advanced you have the minimum TLS version of 1.2 and then uh, I'm going to connectivity is public access so standard uh, doesn't have any private access we only have uh, you could only access it through the public uh, domain then we've got tags and then uh, we will re review and create it click on the create button so the operation is in uh, progress so we will go back to the resource group now still not created I will keep a refresh so we have got the service bus created the pricing tire is standard and if you note here you would see two entities as part of the standard uh, service bus offerings from uh, Azure so earlier uh, in basic uh, service bus offering we only saw the queues entity as part of the standard uh, pricing tier uh, offering we are seeing queues and topics available as part of this offering now we would go inside and create a topic I have a topic name uh, ready for this so I have the name as order to fulfillment center as my topic and then I would click on the create here so I've got the topic created now next I have uh, I need to create different subscriptions so subscriptions are nothing but uh, somebody subscribing one of the it's like a client subscribing to the topic either for all the content uh, in the topic uh, or uh, based on certain condition we are going to subscribe uh, to the uh, topic so I'm going to create uh, four subscriptions as uh, listed here so uh, so I am going to have four subscription for different fulfillment centers so let me add the first subscription so I will keep my uh, subscription name as fulfillment center dot uh, Birmingham and I will keep my max delivery count as one all the other uh, settings I'm going to leave it as uh, default now as I said uh, this fulfillment center needs to receive uh, only the orders that uh, that it can, that it can fulfill so the um, uh, supply warehouse for this particular messages uh, condition should have the supply warehouse as Birmingham for this so I'm going to add a filter here so I'm just going to say the name of the filter as supply warehouse here and then I'm going to say that uh, add a condition supply warehouse is equal to Birmingham so I'm just going to save the changes and now I'm going back one level up I'm going to add the next subscription which is going to be uh, fulfillment center dot uh, Liverpool and uh, max delivery count as one create and uh, I'm going to create one more filter for this name the filter as supply warehouse You would add the condition for the same supply warehouse is equal to uh, Liverpool go back to the fulfillment subscriptions add the next subscription which is going to be fulfillment center dot uh, Manchester max delivery count one I will add the filter a supply warehouse
added one more um, subscription called as uh, fulfillment center dot vendor reorder so this is uh, basically if the code detects that the item is not available in any of the supply warehouse then it is going to um, uh, reorder uh, to the vendor back so so i've got now uh, four subscription uh, ready to be uh, used yeah so if i go back to my uh, go back to my resource group i've got uh, two uh, service bus and uh, one of them is having a queue for receiving the order the other one is having a topic uh, to which publishes based on uh, which warehouse is going to be the right warehouse to service this order and it has uh, subscriptions um, uh, created under it the next uh, job is to create uh, an azure uh, functions so let's uh, create an azure function now let's search for a function here i've got a function app now create it So I've got the function app with the same subscription and the resource group. So I'm going to use the function name as route ABC order. And uh, I'll keep FN as my starting and then UK South. UK South route ABC order. Now I've got my uh, condition to publish is code and then I'm going to select my runtime stack as .NET and version is uh, 6 and my region is uh, UK South. And uh, operating system is going to be Linux and then uh, plan type is uh, consumption serverless. All other things I'm going to leave it as uh, default. I'm not going to uh, make any uh, changes to it. And uh, let's review and create this. Click on create button. The function app uh, deployment is in uh, progress. It should get uh, deployed in a couple of uh, minutes. The next uh, job is to uh, is to uh, deploy my code, which is available in Visual Studio in my machine, to the Azure function. Let's wait for the Azure function to first get deployed, created in the Azure portal. So we are going to discuss two concepts here, which is going to be triggers and bindings. So as we have seen in our business use case, we are going to, uh, we have a SBUK South ABC order queue, which is a service bus. And then there is a, there's going to be a trigger from this uh, service bus to the Azure function. And the Azure function processes the order and then binds it to that particular topic of a service bus. So this happens through two concepts, which is through a trigger and a binding. So what's a trigger and what's a binding? So trigger causes a function to run. So in our uh, earlier examples or uh, in your earlier past uh, projects, you would have used RabbitMQ. So in this case, you would write some plumbing code to uh, connect your service bus, uh, sorry, your uh, queues and your uh, uh, code basically. So you would basically either say, I'm going to subscribe to an event and uh, then th the event should run when it, uh, when it happens. But in this case, the trigger is automatically uh, helping you to bind your Azure service code and your service bus. So that's what uh, it happens. Every trigger will have a payload and uh, and an associated uh, payload with it. So if you come back to my code here, 
you see the trigger is the input uh, for this particular function of my survey of my Azure function. So my Azure function is route order and then uh, it starts with a run function. So this is my trigger service bus trigger and then the trigger will originate from the particular connection which is my service bus connection and within the service bus connection it's going to originate from the queue and the queue name is queue.customer order. Okay. So, I, and it will have an in, incoming payload message, which will be substituted as part of my string my queue item. And uh, I then uh, take this uh, message uh, internally and do the processing of which warehouse should supply. I, it's just I have written a random function to find out. This is uh, ideally not the case, but uh, uh, this is just to show, this is just a demonstrator. So, I'm just put uh, a random uh, uh, warehouse to be picked up. And please note that I am adding my uh, out, adding the warehouse uh, property to the metadata of the message here, and then I am returning that message back to the to the Azure service bus. So if you see, I am returning output message, and when I am returning it, I will uh, it is returned back to the service bus using this uh, syntax here. So what is this syntax? This is called the binding syntax. So this, this way we are binding the output message back to the service bus. And this service bus is back to connected to a connection string connection. And then within that connection, uh, it is binded to a topic. So if I go back here and just show you, I have, it is either a queue name or a topic name. In my case, it's a topic. So I'm binding it back to order to fulfillment center. So if I come back to my example, uh, to my definition, so binding to a function is a way of declaratively connecting another resource to a function. So binding can be connected to input and output bindings. In my case, I've connected as an output binding. So it's a return variable from a function. And I have declaratively binded to the fulfillment center's uh, service bus. And within that, I have binded to a topic. So, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I've got my uh, function here. So I'm going to, going to save it. I'm going to build it one time. And I'm going to uh, publish this particular uh, function uh, to the Azure uh, function. So, okay, the build is happening. So it's not allowing me to publish now. shows ready let me try whether i can publish now if i pick publish now it's taking some time so i'm going to first delete my existing publish action so i'm going to delete the profile now i'm add, going to add a publish profile so i'm going to publish it to azure and i'm going to publish it to azure function app linux so it's making a search and figuring out that there is only one function app uh, with the Linux uh, uh, environment. So it's saying that, uh, yes, can I publish to this? It will create first a publish profile. Now it's created a publish profile. So I'm going to uh, publish it now. Usually it takes some time to publish to the Azure uh, function app from uh, Visual Studio. The publish operation is uh, completed. Let's go back to the Azure portal to check uh, if the function is successfully deployed. So yeah, the function has been uh, successfully deployed. And uh, I've done additionally one thing which I've not shown in this video. So I've added the configuration uh, for the connection strings for <coughs> both the queues basically. So I've got uh, a connection string for a fulfillment uh, center queue connection and uh, I've got uh, a order queue connection string added up so this has brought the uh, Azure function uh, to life so let's uh, do a quick testing I've got an order JSON here and uh, this is what we called as the order uh, JSON 
in my case so I'm just going to go to the ABC order queue I'm going to go to the queue and uh, Azure portal gives you some ways to uh, insert data directly to the queue here so I can send the message from their portal here this is more used for testing so, so I've sent the message one time so let's send four messages one two three and four so I've sent the message four times let's see whether uh, I've got this message received here so I go to the topics and the topics has four subscription yeah so I've got uh, three messages has been received by Birmingham uh, fulfillment center and one message is received by the Liverpool uh, Center. So if I go to the Birmingham Message Center and go to Service Bus Explorer and then uh, peek into the message. So I'm going to select the first message. If you see here, the Azure Service Azure Functions has added the extra supply warehouse here. It has added to the message body as well as to the message properties here and please remember that uh, the filter condition in the Azure uh, in the topics or subscription is applied on the custom properties and it's not applied on the message uh, body so if you want to filter a message uh, to a particular subscription so you need to have a filter applied on the custom properties uh, here And uh, yeah, so I've done the same thing for all other messages uh, has been arrived here. So we could see it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you really see what we have uh, demonstrated today is about um, having two service buses and then uh, routing the order from service bus ABC order uh, queue to the fulfillment centers using the Azure function. So Azure function here pro provided uh, as some base uh, infrastructure components like uh, triggers and uh, bindings whereby we didn't write any plumbing code to uh, connect the messages and process the messages and send to the next service bus. So it comes in very handy for uh, working with uh, Azure native components but it, it has a lot of uh, connectors and uh, if it is the same case with your uh, rabbit mq then you need to write the plumbing code yourself to receive these messages and uh, send these messages across so in this case it acts like a glue uh, quickly to do things and then get uh, moving uh, thanks thanks everyone so thanks everyone for your time today see you bye